product slotting. What is it? Do you need it? That's what we're talking about this week. Uh, and I've got a specialist on the topic with me, John Monk, and we'll get right into that in just a second. So product slotting. Uh, every time I talk to someone about product slotting in warehouse, probably about 70% mm, of people I talk to don't know what it is. So I thought it would be a really good topic to talk about this week. And one of our specialist consultants, John Monk, has joined me. Welcome, John. Thank you, Rob. Thanks for, uh, for raising the topic. It's a very important, uh, very important area for, for warehouse productivity is product slotting. Well, let's understand why that is, because there might be people watching this who don't know what product slotting is um, and why they should do it. So maybe let's start off with the basics. What is it, John? So... Product slotting uh, is probably best described as uh, placing products in the best location to improve your uh, performance of your warehouse. And depending on the approach you want to take, I mean, typically a travel a travel model will provide travel savings, which is a significant percentage of uh, a picker's task. So, yeah, simply put, product slotting is putting products in locations that uh, provide you with uh, either safety improvements, quality improvements, or uh, productivity travel savings. And and so, uh, I mean, the way I often explain it to people is it's a little bit like going to your refrigerator. Um, and, you know, if you open the door of your refrigerator, what's in the door, it's going to be the most commonly used items, isn't it? It might be butter, milk, you know, things like that. And the things you don't use every day are down the back of the warehouse. So, I mean, that, that's kind of what it's about, isn't it? The things that we frequently need to get access to, our faster moving products, we, we bring closer to the dispatch area. And, and I think you've raised in the past when we've had these discussions, Rob, uh, examples where, uh, in fact, uh, Grocery companies would lay out their, uh, you know, their stores in the reverse, where That's they true. force you to force you to walk further, so you <laughs> walk right. past things. Yeah, that where's you might, where's um, the milk in the supermarket? It's down the well, back. Exactly. So yes, you have to exactly. walk past five thousand other products yeah. to get and to. So it. they're looking for that impulse buy because you're having to do the travel. But of course, in a warehouse, we want to do the opposite. We want to place things where they're conveniently located to the next stage in the operation, which typically, if you're picking, is going to either be staging or it's going to be a wrapper or it's going to be a value-added service or it's, or it's a packing station. And so why would you put fast-moving goods uh, or products further away when they need to be conveniently located? To, so so, so um, where, where do people go wrong with this? Because, um, I mean, I, I know you have sort of very specialist approach to doing it. It's, it's very analytical and you can you know, completely lay out a, pro a warehouse based on the product's usage and velocity. But but people often don't have access to that. So how do they do it? And, and what kind of issues does that cause when they try and well, do it themselves? So, to, to be honest, I think, I mean, when you say 70%, I mean, poss possibly if you're a warehouse manager, you, you'd be familiar with the term. Mm. Um, I, I think the biggest challenge is to actually do it. I mean, regardless of whether you use a tool and logistics bureau, we have specialist tools, but even if it's a fairly straightforward uh, operation, you might you know be able to do it yourself with a spreadsheet. It's just actually taking the time to look at it because I think what happens is it's like, that's a good idea, I'll do that. But I think the day job gets in the way often and, and people just don't do it. And I think, the, I think the biggest problem here is that we don't actually think about travel as waste. And if we're walking past the product that we're not picking, you actually have to think about that as waste. What, what, what ends up happening is that if you look out, if you casually look out into the warehouse, you can see your operators are busy and they're active and they're not sitting down, they're not wasting time from that perspective, but they're actually walking past locations they don't need to walk past. And, and sometimes it's just a matter of reviewing uh, what products you pick the most and just moving them to that you know convenient location that's closer to reduce travel and that's that's what uh, uh, businesses need to do to get the most out of from a, a reduction in travel so, so you mentioned a good point there that most warehouse managers kind of understand the concept but maybe they don't necessarily have the the support and the resource and so on to to fix it uh, maybe for more senior people watching this you know general managers logistics managers or whatever you know you might have them thinking now if if we say to them, go out into your warehouse and, and kind of look for this and this and this, and that might be telltale signs that slotting is an issue for you, what what would those three, two or three things be? 
Well, the first thing I, you know, I would do anyway is try and understand what I call is the skew velocity, and that's the number of times you, you pick a skew. And so you can get this information even out of your sales order system just to say, well, how often do I you know, pick different products? And most businesses do uh, follow what we call the Pareto principle, which is like the 80-20 rule. I, mean, I think this is a, a term a lot of people have heard before as well. Um, in fact, it's what would be used to define what we call ABC analysis of your SKUs. So grab some of those A SKUs and see where they're placed. I mean, that's the, probably the first thing. You know, they're the, one, they're the ones that you're wanting to uh, be closer to mm. that next step in the process. And if they're all over the warehouse, then hmm, maybe we've got a problem. Yeah, I mean, we had a client, by way of example, we had a client where we did a product slotting exercise for, and they just, and again, it's just not thinking through it. They had they had uh, specific products for specific clients, but they hadn't grouped them together. And so they were walking all over the warehouse and what turned out to be an hour and a half pick, but by just putting them together as a group, they, they reduced it to half an hour. I mean, it's an wow. enormous benefit when you then multiply that across different categories of products is putting them closer together and moving them closer to where you need them um, based on their velocity. I mean, some some companies will have a dark aisle where they don't need to go down, they don't need to travel down that aisle because the, these products are infrequently picked. So they're the sort of areas to like consider uh, mm. with looking looking at your product skew velocities and saying where should these be placed. Yeah. I mean, it depends on the, on the business and the rules that we would develop, uh, mm. that we develop, and we develop them with our clients who are experts in their business but understand the overall flow flow of products. What the next step in the process is? Is it a value add? Is a value um, adding step, or is it packing, or is it stretch wrapping to then be dispatched? So that's that's what we're we're looking for. So I, I know you've helped lots of businesses with these issues, John. I mean, let me let me put you on the spot for a minute. For for a warehouse that's kind of never really looked at product slotting seriously, and then to go through a product slotting process, which is which is not that sort of hard to do, is it, if you, if you have the right systems? What, what's the benefit? Look, what we find, if if a warehouse hasn't actually gone through and done a product slotting exercise, we can we generally find uh, labour savings in the picking function, in the direct labour picking function, of between 15 to 25%. Wow. And we've seen it higher than that, but that would be the range. And if, you're, if you can get a 20% saving in... Uh, picking labour. I mean, if you've got certainly when you start to get it to a reasonable size warehouse, that can be significant savings that, that you be can huge money actually see. Warehouse. But besides that, it also means that if you're being stretched at the moment because supply chains aren't working and you can't keep up, it actually gives you more capability to pick things quicker. It's just not you're just not travelling. I mean, particularly the travel type savings, you're just not travelling mm. and taking that time. Yeah. And it's like when you drive somewhere, you're driving to a closer location doesn't take as long. So yeah. Uh, yeah, fifteen to twenty five percent is uh, is what we typically see, uh, and, we, and we have seen and we have seen more than that, of course. Yeah, staggering. Look, I, I think it's a topic that people probably want to know more about. So uh, let's think what we can give people access to. Uh, I'm sure we've got some uh, articles. Uh, on our website. We'll put links to that down below. Um, you know what I think we should do, John? Um, we're, we're kicking off our webinar series again. They're going to be quarterly webinars. Could could you come along and maybe do a, a webinar on slotting and we get yeah, into um, a little bit um, more detail and see the tools that you use? Um, definitely. So, pa pa it's, a, it's a passionate topic for me because mm -hmm. I just see it's such a, it's yeah. a, sort of one of the you know, in times when and capital uh, funds are short, mm -hmm. this is something that, you know, you can do operationally and and you get you get benefits out of it very yeah. quickly. So wow. you don't have to wait, you know, nine months for a mm. piece of automation. Yeah. You can you can save you can save things fairly quickly once you do an exercise of product slotting. Okay, so let's put that on the webinar agenda. So we'll put a link down below in the description below the video. We'll put some links there so where you can sign up for the webinars. Um, and and if you don't mind, John, I'll put your LinkedIn link there. So I mean, if if somebody kind of needs some help right now, they can reach out to you as well. Fantastic. So it's a Thank fascinating you. topic, and I know you, yeah, you, you love to get involved in this mm. stuff. So thanks for joining us. Maybe a uh, question if you're watching this. Have you ever done product slotting in your warehouse? And if you did, what was the benefit that you got? We'd really be keen to hear. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week. Thank you, Rob.